leave him alone. What? You heard me, Bakugo. Just walk away and leave him alone. That's all you have to do. <laughs> You're serious? Yeah. Excuse me. Why should I listen to you? If you don't want to get hurt, you'll do what I say. <laughs> if I don't want to get hurt, that's funny coming from you. <sighs> Alright. Fine. We'll leave. As soon as Bogo sees that Izuku is turning around, he sucker punches him with an explosion. Oh, or he has two lackeys to hold him down. One thing is, Izuku is fighting back hard. You see, after Izuku got beat up once he was still a child by Bakugo and his friends, he decides it's time for him to actually do something about it if he doesn't want to end up being a doormat or a punching bag. So yes, he started going to the gym, working out, getting bulky as hell, as well as uh, more confident in himself. So though he doesn't win the fight, I mean hell is still he still outnumbered and whatnot, and they have quirks over him. They don't get out unscathed either. So yes, everyone comes home with a bunch of bruises and scrapes. Izuku is sporting some nice new burn marks. Inko, by this point, she does know that Bakugo is messing with Izuku. The only thing is, Izuku tells her not to do anything. She keeps asking, why not tell me, Ski? Why not tell the classroom teachers or whatever, principal? Izuku wants to handle it himself with his own power. Her constantly reminding him, you have no where hell are you going to be able to fight them if... And then Izuku pulls out something from his pocket. And go like, what is that? Is that a tooth? Yes. But, wait, but... Yeah, that's right, it's not my tooth. See? Him having the biggest smile showing that he still has all his teeth. But who? <laughs> I really wonder... <laughs> what uh... their parents are gonna say as he takes out two more teeth he goes like you didn't oh yes I did but why? trophies that's kinda gross true <sighs> but it's done if anything, they want to keep messing with me, fine. But I'm not going to just lie down and take it. As Ingo does like the whole him not being a, a weak little lamb anymore, she is worried about his well-being in the the fact that, yeah, he still wants to be a hero. He's not wanting to give up on his dream at all. Which could cause him to get even more dangerously hurt. <laughs> oh well. The only thing she can do is really support him in his endeavors. And hopefully, pray that he comes home safe. Now, Izuku goes to the gym, in which he does meet up with one of his newer friends, Kirishima, and 
Kirishima does get a peek of Izuku having a bunch of bruises and scrapes and whatever. And Burn Mars, he wonders, okay, what happened to you this time? Izuku, I fell. Really? You fell down what? So it was this? Yeah. <sighs> Seriously, man, tell me, is, is there someone messing with you or whatever? Come on, we're friends, right? Come on, we're gym bros here. We, we can uh, both take take them on, don't you think? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I guess. Good. Uh, so, uh, who are they? Uh, some old friends of mine. As soon as they got their quirks, they started being assholes. Okay, let's go pay them a visit. No. What? I just told you I could help. Yeah, but I want to handle it myself. Like I told my mom, I want to handle it my own way. Get your ass kicked? Oh, no. They don't get out there on skate either. I think Kirishima knows his Izuku's back. There are no scrapes, no cuts, no burns, no bruises. Kirishima wondering, how is that possible? As Izuku just says, I stand my ground. I don't try to run away. Retreat or none of that. I take them on without fear of what happens are you literally saying that you don't retreat when the odds are against you yeah you're serious <laughs> yeah that is the most, yeah, I know, mainly thing I've ever heard. Uh, wait, what? Yeah! I mean, it's one thing for you to get your ass kicked and you try to run away, but for you to stand your ground, despite the odds being obviously against you, not having a single mark on your back, being proof of that, that is nothing if not admirable. Ugh. Too bad I already dyed my hair to, you know, tell me red right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But, yeah, even then, I still wouldn't want you to dye your hair green. Why not? Don't get me wrong. It would be a little creepy. Flattering. To some people, but it's creepy to me. Ugh. Seriously, man. I gave you a compliment and I appreciate it, but I don't want you to be like that. Dude, seriously. Uh, mm. yeah, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. But I still mean what I said, though. I want to help you beat the crap out of these guys. <sighs> yeah, I don't know if whatever. Um, excuse me. Hmm? Hey, it's you. Uh, you know this guy? Uh, he's a good. Um, yeah, actually, yeah. He was the one being bullied. Really? Huh. Wait. So, what's he doing? I followed you. Excuse me. Y yeah. I've been made to thank you for standing up 
for me, but I, uh, I'm not that good when it comes to people. Hmm. Alright. Oh yeah, by the way, why were they messing with you anyway? Uh, my, my court. Uh, what? Do you have one? Uh, yeah. What is it? Uh, brainwashing. What? Please, please explain. Uh, I don't know if I... I'll just show him what your quirk is. What's your name? As Kirishima just go stiff and... Okay. Punch yourself in the face. Kirishima doing so. Izuku seen this... What the hell? You, that's your quirk? Yeah. That's just... I I can't believe it. That quirk is just... Villainous. Awesome! Huh? Yeah! I mean... Could you imagine... If you... Could do that to a whole... Area of... People or villains. You could get them to either calm down. You could... You know, upper head the villains, make them send themselves to jail or something. It's seriously, if you train that court, it could be very useful in the hero world. Wait, you you think I could be a hero with such a villainous quirk? <laughs> villainous quirk? There's no such thing. What? There's no such thing as a villainous quirk. Only villainous people. Hell, it's not the quirk that makes it someone villainous. It's how you use it. It's who uses it that can dictate whether you're a hero or a villain. I mean, think of Endeavor. His quirk is fire. Austin got fire. Can you imagine if he was a villain? No, but he has a very dangerous quirk, doesn't he? Uh, y y yeah, I, I, I guess. And, whew, imagine all my... Wait, the number one hero is a villain? Yeah! Imagine him as a villain. All that raw power. Uh, uh, oh, oh my god, you're right. Yeah, I know. It's crazy when you really think about it, huh? Yeah. I never considered that. People seldom do. But yeah. If you want to be a hero, you can be a hero. If you're going to be a villain, well, that's still your choice. But... That's not going to stop me from trying to bring you to justice. Uh, I want to be a hero. Huh. Good. So do I. And so is my friend. Looking at Kirishima, he's sleeping. Hmm. I'm going to have to wake him up. I am not carrying him home again. So we're just smacking Kirishima until he pretty much sucks Izuku in the stomach. We're slapping him. Izuku groaning in pain, but this is when it's an all-out fight between him and Kirishima. Kirishima say, "Why are you slapping me?" While well, Izuku say, "Why did you punch me?" Shinzo like, "Oh my God, what, what have I?" Just agreed to be friends with. Maybe this is how they become friends. Ah, wonderful. As this is about the time when Izuku is 14, as well as you could say Shinzo and Kirishima. Yeah, they've changed a wee bit. Shizu, 
he knows how strong his quirk is, as well as seeing the heroic applications thanks to Isuku's input. But he also does build up his body mass just in case his quirk is useless. I mean, if he can't even use his voice or get the person to talk, what's the real point? When it comes to Kirishima, him using his quirk don't really change that much except for the fact that he does end up using his hair as more of a kind of like saw the hedgehog's quills he told him well, why don't you try to make your hair longer or something like, why just so I can use you as a potential bowling ball or wrecking ball what? Yeah, why not? I, I... I don't even know what to really say. Yeah, I mean, if you had long enough hair, I... Could you imagine? No. I, I would rather not think about that. And seriously, I would you... Have you tried uh, making weapons out of your hair? What? Yeah. I mean, it's just not your body parts that get them. That, uh... Transform. Yeah, I mean, my hair does get hard, too. What? What's what, so funny? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing at all. I can't believe you actually said it. Okay. But, why, why would I need to use them as weapons? Think about it. Depending on how you can actually keep them hard, they'll be very useful weapons whenever your quirk does run out. Huh. So you're saying if I could get my hair longer and turn it into something like a knife or a sword or something, as it stiffens and gets hard, yeah, depending on how your quirk uh, is, at least if it is indefinite. Yeah, you could have a pretty much an organic weapon. Oh, I, I never would have thought of that. Wow. Yeah, heck, imagine if you could use them as bullets. What? Oh yeah. You're right! Of course I'm right. Or, heck, say the police are out of handcuffs like it was a big bust. Just use your hair. <laughs> you, you put a lot of thought into how I could use my quirk, didn't you? Yep. Huh. You... Or very smart. <laughs> Maybe that's your quirk. Super intelligence. Hmm. Nah. If anything, it's just me being average. With a little above average tactical mind. As well as being able to think outside the box. I mean, heck, what shit so? If he was able to just have a recording of his voice with, you know, basic demands, can you imagine? Hmm. Yeah. If his brainwashing quirk actually could carry over to recordings, all you, 
what I had to do was pretty much set them up somewhere where the villains would be like, okay, I'm going to get away, but then stop. But then again, he has to think of something that will get them to talk. Maybe a random question? Yeah, but how random would the question have to be to get people to answer him? Or at least respond. And didn't think that far ahead. But yeah, you pretty much get a gist of what I'm saying. <laughs> no kidding. It's crazy how much thought you put into this. Crazy? Mm, perhaps. But can't argue with results. Now can you? Hmm. Ugh, just a smart ass. Yup. All right, boys. Back to the gym. Uh, all right, pops. Excuse me. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Is there something funny, Shinso? You know exactly what he called you, old man. Excuse me. I'm just as old as you. Yeah, but you act like our dad. I. I do. Yeah, you are way over predictive at times. Don't get me wrong. Part of us really appreciate you caring so much, but at the end of the day. Seriously, we're not your kids. Huh. I never noticed that. Yeah, no kidding. Ugh. You know what? Let's just hit the showers and go to the beach. You can't be serious. What? That place is a landfill. Why in the world would we... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. What? What? What was he? Shit, so what was he talking about? What What was he, what was he thinking? Ugh, training. What's the big deal if it's at a beach? Think of a beach is a landfill of garbage and discarded things people don't want to see. At the pleasures of seeing ever again. Huh. So, yes, he's having us train there. Hmm. Is there any particular reason? Yeah. They want people to start helping the environment. And they'll pay us a certain amount of money depending on how much uh, trash we collect. Oh. So you're pretty much doing this for getting a little extra pocket money, huh, Izuku? What? No, I, I'm doing this for the good of the community. It'll be a shame if... Things get silly just because of some garbage problem. Then I'm not buying it, but still going where he's a good to help me clean up that beach. After days of rigorous hard work, heavy lifting, and money collecting, you could say they may out like bandits. Something captures Izuku's attention. He sees this weird fruit that looks like a gourd, but blue with spirals and all in it. They were saying they like it, but he was getting a little peckish. Taking a bite and promptly washing his tongue out with salt water. 
Yeah. You could just say, here she went on a cheese and sell her pretty much like, what's wrong? That fruit tastes terrible. Wait. This fruit? Yes. Oh, it's one of the worst things I've ever tasted. Huh. Let me try. No. Nope. 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 I need to destroy this thing as soon as I as Izuru crushes it by accident. Whoa! I I did. Did I just do that? Yeah. I mean, you did like it was child's play for you. I, I figured you'd be able to do something like that, but I thought it would require more force. Yeah, that's weird. As Zuko starts walking towards them, they know it's an earthquake. Starts to shake around them. It only stops when Zuko does. And then he starts up again. Oh. Okay, that's weird. Here she will look at Shinzo. Do you think. What? Hmm. Izuku, walk to us closer. Izuku, again, walking, earthquake, happens again. Pretty much confirming Kirishima's hypothesis. Yep, Izuku, I, you're causing the earthquake. Uh-huh. Yep, you're the cause of it. <laughs> How? Who knows, man? That fruit gave you superpowers. <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. There's no way in hell. Could you imagine? Uh, what, eating a fruit and then gain superpowers? That's just ridiculous. Yeah, would be cool, though, but uh, I doubt it. Wait, I have superpowers? I, I was causing the earthquake? Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Are you sure it's not an earthquake? <sighs> Try walking towards us again. Again, he's a good does it, and again! The whole ground starts shaking around them. Do you believe me now? Yes. Now, I think you should stay here a bit longer before you end up causing a disaster. But, oh come on! What's the... You could sink this island. You could demolish houseless homes. You need to get this under control as fast as you can. Oh. Ugh. Fine. Fine. Just. Ugh. How long is this going to take? I don't know, but until we really get your new power under control, mm, why don't we tell our families that we're doing a camping thing? At very least, then you won't have to worry about destroying anything and you can train your new power. Which I still think that fruit could have had some side effects towards you. Enough with the fruit, there's no way in hell a single fruit could grant superpowers. Especially ones that can create earthquakes. <sighs> yeah, you know, you're, about, you're probably right. Ugh. Just ridiculous theory of mine. Kirishi, you You may be the smartest, but you are definitely one of the most bold. Uh, 
What? Yes. You're not just saying that just to make you feel better. Of course not. <laughs> you wouldn't be saying that if you knew how it was before. What you've done in the past means nothing. It's what you do in the present that matters most. Uh, thanks, uh, Izuku. Uh, Kirishima? Y yeah? What's wrong? Why are you blushing? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not blushing. It's just, uh, really hot outside. I'm, uh, that's, that's all. It's just hot flashes. Okay, uh, whatever you say. And with that, Izuku's train begins. In which, it was a very difficult learning curve. No one you had to go through school without uh, throwing off his whole equilibrium. He had to try his best not to punch Bakugo. It took countless times of him being smacked awake because he kept causing earthquakes in his sleep through his movements, but eventually he did get the hang of it. Now that he can activate the power whenever he wants, he needs to be able to control the amount of power he exerts. Because one punch could possibly destroy a mountain. So that is what he's focusing on. And wouldn't you know, Bakugo of all people decides to see why the hell has Izuku been avoiding him like the plague. Whenever Bakugo does try to bully him, Izuku would just ignore him and walk away. Re really just pissing him off even more. It's like, are you do you, do you really think you're better than me now? So Imagine about go surprise when Izuku, honest to God, punches him and he is sent flying. Luckily, the little beach is clean and the people have been visiting there. Everyone saw that Balgo is the one that started this. So when police are called, Izuku is reprimanded for using his quirk. But yeah, not as much as Bongo for antagonizing him. And yes, that is pretty much how that went down. Now, when it comes to Izuku actually preparing, he pretty much has Kirishima with his quirk by proceeding to beat the ever loving crap out of him. All he has to do is punch him and attack him while Kirishima has his guard up. And Kirishima has learned that once he does harden his hair, he can break it off easily. The only thing is, it takes quite a long time for it to turn back to regular hair. First time he did it, it lasted only like... Mm, Two minutes before I revert back to just normal hair strands. But he's made it so it can last up to two hours. The only way to really break out of them is to overpower his quirk. Yes. So as long as you're stronger than his hardening quirk, yeah, you can break out of him. That's if you're able to overpower it. So, yeah, I guess is what Izuku is trained to do now. Kirishima, he feels as this is a bad idea, considering... Uh, okay, dude, uh, why are you probably seem to break out of my restraints? Just in case. In case what? Do you plan on doing something that will try to stop you? maybe you, you never know there might be another self-defense thing that needs to be done 
you're not gonna go after <laughs> no no of course not I would never oh my god he is yeah you see he insulted you guys he insulted me I just can't let that slide but you had him arrested true well, this is here. He's just going to come back and start more BS, isn't he? Okay, okay. He's, he's a good... I get why you're doing this. Great, so we're all in agreement. No, that's not what I said. But isn't it better for you just to be the bigger person? I mean, yeah... He was insulting you. Uh, oh, no, that's not why. What? Oh, yeah, he'd been insulting me for years before I even started using this quirk. This goes what he said to you. You guys are my boys. Are you saying you're trying to defend us? Yes. What's so wrong about that? <sighs> and you wonder why we keep calling you Pops. Uh, yeah, uh, point taken, but seriously, you're, but you are getting hella tall, yeah, yeah, I know, Ugh. so, what should I do if I'm not going to seek vengeance? For my boys. Stop calling us that. We are your friends. You make it sound like we are your kids. Ugh. Seriously. You're making my dad suspicious. What? What? Yeah. We all need you acting like our parents in front of our parents. Uh. Right, right. Don't get me wrong. My mom has been looking at you, which I have reprimanded her a lot for doing so. But still, it's partially your fault too for acting so fatherly. Oh. So you don't want me to be appreciated. But no. You are our friend, not our dad. There is a difference. We care about you too, but we just don't want to be seen as your kids. Oh. Alright, I understand. Do you? Do you really? Yes. I'm sorry. <sighs> Alright. Good. Now that we got that out of the way. <sighs> Let's go to work. Actually, I found a new job. What? Why? Why, why? why didn't you tell me? Come on, we... We wanted to work at the gym together. Yeah, but, you know, I still want to be a hero and everything, so... What? Are you saying you found a internship with, a, what, a hero or something? You didn't. I did. How? What? Who? Oh, this nice woman. Her name's uh, Mount Lady. Oh, she's one of those newer heroes. You can't deny she's pretty good, good looking though. That I cannot. But wait, Isuku, is that why? No, no. If anything, she approached me. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, come on. She approached me. I swear. She's the one. Whatever. Uh, well, Casanova, just make sure you uh, protect yourself. Uh, whatever. 
you two will look out for any magic fruits. Ah. You're never gonna let me lay that down. Nope. <laughs> no, no way in hell. I would never let you let down your ridiculous notion that a fruit gave me these powers. I told you I'll... I am sorry for something so ridiculous. Doesn't matter. You shall never live that down. Ever. Not so long as I'm around. Uh, shit, so please break me up here. You're the one that said the fruit was magic. Yeah. Yeah, that I did. I regret so much right now. Yep, I bet you do. But, anywho, let's... Yeah, I'll see you guys later. As soon as Zuku does get to Malay's agency, he does see Kony Woods and wish he's not as nice as he seems on TV or during the fights he's in. He's very hostile towards Izuku. Why don't you like me? What makes you think I don't like you? Well, um, for one, you uh, won't let me through the door. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have this new policy in which there are uh, two key cards. Yeah, see? Like this. And I'm uh, guarding the door. That is one of the lamest excuses I've ever heard. Well, if you can't get past me, Izuku just backhands him and he gets uh, flying. Izuku, uh, huh? I said like, you're taking a quick nap. I'll, I'll see myself in. Conway Woods being pissed, but also. Uh, uh, I, I kind of deserve that. <sighs> this guy's quirk is ridiculous. And then, Izuku, he meets up with my lady and she's happy to see him. And then she's also asking him a million questions a minute. Something you expect a clan and Izuku to do. But at the end of the day, she's starting to get very personal like how long does he want to be a hero what kind of when did he awaken his power uh, what's his favorite food getting very seemingly close towards him and not wanting to be an ass yeah he answers her all his life uh, earlier in the summer or so, and uh, that's a secret. Her blushing Izuku. Uh, wow, I did not think that was going to work. Kami was, of course, in the background looking like an extra. So, uh, how does this whole internship thing work? I just help you guys out, or hmm, leave it like this. Unlike regular interns in which you get coffee and other things, you will uh, go on us, go with patrols, and provide support. I don't have to fight, do I? Not unless we give you an order to. Other than that, just be careful. He's a group happy to see that this job is not going to be as hard as he thought, but also wondering. Ugh, I have to get ready for a very important exam. Yeah. 
I have to pass. I have to make sure I didn't waste my time here. Hmm. Hey, do you think we could spar? Uh, what? Yes. You would hit a woman? You damn... Are you serious? Yes. Heck, it's so ungentlemanlike. There are female villains too. You think they're gonna... You think they're killing... Or crimes should go unpunished just because of their genders? What? These hands are rated E for everyone. Doesn't matter. You're man and woman. Uh, oh, so you're one of those. Yep. I am pro-gender equality for everyone. <sighs> Damn it. So, chances are, this is going to hurt. No worry. It'll be over for you. You know what? Yeah, I'll only hurt for a second. As, yeah. Though, she technically has more experience as a hero as well as fighting. She is still green. While Izuku doesn't worry about the press or anything, making himself look like a, a instant little lamb. Or, you know, one of the new hottest heroes. He actually worries about getting the job done. Not much so when it comes to publicity. So, yes, he starts wailing on Mount Lady. Everyone is shocked at this. But also, like, wow, this kid is, uh, very powerful. He's sending shock waves. Though my age joints made it hard for her to move, and as well as hard enough to attack him. When she does get bigger, she forgets the fact that oh wait, I just gave him a bigger target. Izuku is more than happy to take full advantage of that. When she goes to slam her hand down, Izuku jumps on her arm and pretty much socks her in the jaw and she goes down. Everyone is impressed at the fact that he barely used his quirk at all. He just knew about Mount Lay's quirk, he knew the drawbacks, he knew how to counter. So all in all, this kid's got some real potential here. Though she is upset that she lost, Izuku is a good sport. But he does uh, notice that, wow, I really worked up a sweat. As he does start slipping, and Mallory is still big, so she was sweating too. As Izuku starts sliding down towards her head, then she tries to raise up. Izuku is face to face with her, her freaking out, leaping up, and Izuku slides almost inside her leotard. Everyone is blushing. Mount Lady is blushing. Izuku is trying his best not to get slapped by Mount Lady. But she just ultimately <sighs> Go take a shower. Please. Or just running away. Izuku trying to explain that he didn't mean any of this. Well, some of the guys have bloody noses. The way we are like you guys are pervs. And uh, Connie Woods, he is definitely 
salty. How so? He switches the signs from men to women. The thing is, he switches them at the wrong time. He switches the men's to be the women's, uh, and vice versa. Only thing is, Izuku went to the men's bath, and a lady went into the men's bath too. In which, a lady sees Izuku. The only thing is, Izuku is washing his hair before he goes into the bath. She's about to scream, but then she realizes, oh wait, he can't see me right now. So, here comes an awkward conversation. Mount Lady using the deepest voice she can muster, while Izuku is pretty much talking about how great she is, how impressed he is about her using her quirk. But then he starts criticizing her public appearances that it seems like she really just wants to be an actress or an idol. More like a show pony who doesn't really care as much for you know saving people or stopping villains. More like she just wants to be the center of attention and the spotlight. As she does hear about how he felt about her pretty much stealing the glory from Conway Woods that time she feels bad. At first, when the criticism started, she was pissed. Like, how dare you speak such? Then he does have a point. I am a hero, but I, mm. I'm more like an, an actress in, on the stage. But then he starts talking about all the drawbacks for her quirk, as well as how he was able to utilize said drawbacks to beat her, and how happy he was to really be there, even saying how her quirk could be used for other reasons or in other ways. She just wishes she had a pen and paper to write down all the other ways she can utilize her quirk. He's a group. He finally is done washing his hair and washing himself, going to turn around and see a completely naked mountain lady. And one scream or two later, everyone runs in to find Izuku with a bloody nose, with his head pretty much embedded in the tile. Now, Lady, she has a towel on for herself now, as well as a bloody nose. Everyone's wondering what happened. Kobe was like, huh. Maybe I should have thought this through better. As they pull up a camera of him doing it. Him getting reprimanded, but also, why? Just, just why? You know, hazing is illegal now. Perhaps. But it was funny, wasn't it? Uh. <sighs> Though funny it was, wrong it was definitely more of. So yes, he gets suspended. But he feels like, yeah, that was worth it. Izuku, he's happy of the sight he was able to behold, but he's also feel bad considering that, yeah, he pretty much embarrassed Mount Lady in such a way. She's pretty much in a curl up in a ball, saying how she can never get married, and that Izuku has to take responsibility for, for what happened. And as you can expect, Izuku is more than happy to do this. 
In fact, he does end up getting back on her better side. The only problem is, he's like, I can't really do anything for you now, but if you're willing to wait until we're both eight, at least legal, I'll make it up to you. Heck, I'll buy you a drink, too. My lady, of course, she's pretty much bewitched by Izuku's kindness, let alone his innocence. Though, yes, he looks like an absolute unit, he is very humble and modest. But then he fucks up by saying that he will... will always treasure that moment that he has burnt the image of her into his mind trying to be flattering but also being kind of perverse getting his head embedded into the floorboards once again he feels like he did nothing wrong until you really need to know how to talk to women yeah I do but at the very least, uh, she doesn't completely hate me. Yeah, I, I guess. Now, on to the whole interest is Sam. They say he's who's trading as well as working with my lady. He knows what to do. He knows he can save people. He knows to destroy robots and cause the least amount of collateral damage. And which uh, is very easy for him to do thanks to the amount of control he's been able to acquire. His only problem is when people want to be reckless and possibly endanger other participants as well as themselves. Though he scolds him afterwards, he in, in his mind is also thanking him for giving him potential hero points. Though he doesn't know about them, he figured, okay, this is a hero academy, so chances are we're supposed to act heroic. Easy peasy. It's when Izuku is about to leave, as soon as the zero pointers heard, we does get his hero instincts get into overdrive as yes someone gets trapped and Izuku has to be the hero him using a technique called overwhelming a black hole or very least something where he uses vibrations all around his opponent this caused them to start collapsing on themselves it's very helpful for stretching villains, but it is devastating when used at full power. As he crushes the zero pointer to pretty much the size of a seven meter ball. Everyone's impressed, especially the girl. The only thing is, Izuku, he's more or less embarrassed the fact that he just gave away one of his strongest techniques. Whoops! But, all in all, not a bad day. Once he gets the fact that, yeah, you passed flying colors, you're the top student so far. He's happy. When he hears that Shinso did get into UA, but isn't in 1A like him and Kirishima, he is disappointed. But Shinzo isn't really upset. If anything, he just sees this as an opportunity just to get stronger. And at least they're in the same school. <laughs> 